Abemaciclib is a really interesting drug. Uh, it is given continuously, as we've discussed, so dose continuously without a break. In the phase one trial, looking at abemaciclib in the treatment of heavily pretreated metastatic breast cancer, the investigators were surprised to see an overall response rate of about 30 percent. Quite intriguing in for a class of drugs where we think of the overall response rate as being less than 20 percent, significantly less than 20 percent. And if you looked at the phase one trials with ribociclib and palbociclib, in fact, the response rates were less than 10 percent. Again, heavily pretreated endocrine refractory disease. But for abemaciclib, it seemed to be better. So that started the first trial, actually, of abemaciclib in treating metastatic hormone receptor positive breast cancer, which was a phase two single agent trial called Monarch One, where patients who had relatively endocrine refractory disease were treated with single agent abemaciclib with a primary endpoint of overall response. Shortly thereafter, the randomized phase three Monarch II trial was started, which was the definitive trial to lead to uh, FDA or regulatory approval of abemaciclib. So we treated uh, quite a number of patients, over 100 patients on uh, the, in the Monarch I trial, and showed an impressive response rate of just under 20%, so 19.5% in that group of patients. And the response rates were quite durable in a number of patients with progression-free survival of about six months, which was, I think, very impressive for using a single agent that was reasonably well tolerated in fairly heavily pretreated patients with metastatic breast cancer. But our endpoint was a response rate of 30%. So we didn't meet the endpoint. Uh, but it, to me, it's still very impressive. And I think that one of the areas where abemaciclib may be used as we move forward and see approval of abemaciclib uh, will be in patients who progressed on a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor, even though we don't have any data about this as a single agent in late line therapy. I think also that patients who went on chemo who didn't get a CDK4-6 inhibitor in the indicated settings may receive abemaciclib as well as a single agent later line uh, with or without a hormonal agent. But it gives us a lot of information about the potency of this drug in uh, patients with hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer in a later line setting. It's important to keep in mind that Monarch One treated patients who'd never been exposed to a prior CDK4-6 inhibitor, uh, but there will be a trial that looks at abemaciclib after treatment with the other two more similar CDK4-6 inhibitors to get an idea of what the response rates are in that setting. Early phase clinical trials, including a phase two single arm clinical trial, has indicated that abemaciclib does have single agent activity. However, I won't be using this as a single agent in the absence of a randomized clinical trial, given the fact that we have such impressive data with the use of CDK4-6 inhibitors in combination with hormonal therapy. So while the single agent activity of abemaciclib is very intriguing, and may speak to its underlying potency. Um, I don't think it's time for us clinically to be using any of these drugs single agent. We're just beginning to see clinical data of the use of abemaciclib for central nervous system disease. And actually the data are quite intriguing and promising. Sarah Tolaney at the Dana-Farber presented the results of a phase two clinical trial in which somewhere around 20 patients who had CNS metastases were given a doses of abemaciclib prior to surgery and then had their tumor samples, plasma, and CSF tested for abemaciclib levels. And in this clinical trial, it was very interesting that they showed abemaciclib levels are similar in tumor, plasma, and CSF. So this is indicating that abemaciclib can cross the blood-brain barrier. Moreover, several responses were seen in her clinical trial. I'm very interested in seeing the longer-term results and follow-up of this study as more patients are accrued to her clinical trial. This is an area of unmet need, uh, even though patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer are less likely to have CNS metastases than patients with HER2 positive or triple negative breast cancer. The activity of, of the bemocyclib in the central nervous system is, is very intriguing and might actually be shown to be active as well in other subtypes of breast cancer, such as HER2 positive.